Tyne and I used to meet after, we'd work 17 hours. And then the crew would go home, then she would meet, usually in my trailer, the bar was open. And we would have a drink and we would sit there and run the next day's work. We worked together for a couple of hours before we went home. And um, <laughs> one evening after a couple of drinks, <laughs> we said, I don't think this is a very good scene, do you? She said, no, it's just not working. It's not working. I said, I'll talk to Barney tomorrow. <laughs> so I would go into Barney's, I was so ashamed. <clears throat> I went into Barney's room. By then I figured we had a little power going on, tying in me. I took the script. I apologize now in advance for this. I took the script, I threw it on his desk and I said, this is shit. He said to me, shit. He <laughs> said, that's the best material you've ever had in your entire career. <laughs> I said, fuck you. <laughs> he said, fuck me, fuck you. <laughs> I'd never had a producer talk to me that way. I don't remember this at you all. You did, I swear to you. I swear to you, it's exactly what happened. It's not in my book. <laughs> well, I know, I know, but that's exactly what happened. This book. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, rightfully so. Um, I know everything he went through to make this extraordinary series. It was I coming in and telling him, it's shit. You know, he was protecting his material. So he was actually right. Well, it isn't so much a question of being right. The one advantage I did have, though, and I think it's maybe of interest to many of the people who watch this sort of material, uh, who are more than fans, many of them are people who are actually in the business or of the business. Um, I, had a, I was not a hyphenate. I do write, I have written, I wrote some Cagney and Lacey's, but basically I did not write. I produced the shows. I could hire people who were better writers than me. But more important than that, when I defended the material, no one could say to me, well, he's defending it because he wrote it. I was defending it because it was good. And that was the position I took with the network, and with the stars. And barely with the and, 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 you know, so I just didn't, you know, and, and so I was the defender of the material, but defending it because I believed that it was righteous, the righteous thing to do. It gave me a great advantage uh, uh, in, in, in working relationships with people. Uh, in his defense, we did. We were able to sit down and have less violent discussions. Hmm. Um, and more often than not, he would listen to us. We always did it separately. We tried to right. We tried to have meetings with writers um, together. Tyne and I with all the writers, and it didn't work because Tyne was much more articulate than I. I mean, she could sit down and tell them that the 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 structure of the script wasn't working. I'm going, what is that? <laughs> um, but I was very, very protective and very involved in my character, and I didn't know quite how to express. I kept saying, it just doesn't feel, it doesn't, and I didn't know how to do it. So Barney would separate Tyne and me for our discussions after that with the writers, and he would always sit in, at least with me, to interpret for me. Because it was almost sometimes without speaking, he could tell what it was I was really trying to say to them. And yeah, The best sessions I remember, and there were different types, that took place at different times of the day. Many of them I was not involved in. Many times there would be a writer who I would say, go talk to them and see what they want, and come back to me and we'll talk about it together. But the best ones that I remember would be when I'd show up at the trailer, at the, uh, summoned by them, to hear the scene that they were doing the next day. This was not stuff now that was... Uh, in the abstract, this was not stuff that was weeks away. This was, we were ready to shoot this in the morning and they were rehearsing it that night. And now we're talking about it's 10, 11 o'clock at night, they've had a couple of drinks, and they've worked it out, and they don't like what they're doing. So they call me up, and, I, and I'm around. There are no other writers around. And I show up in the, in the dressing room. And they would be courteous enough, if prodded, which I tried to do, to say, look, just read it once the way it's written. Just one time, don't tell me what's wrong with it. Just do it the way it's written. And they would do that, and it would be discernible because I knew them well enough, and I knew the material well enough, it would disturbable where they were having trouble, where they were stumbling over a, a, a phrase or a, 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 the, the use of a word. And I could adjust that for them easily. Or, or better yet, they would say, uh, well, I said, do you understand what I'm trying to do here? And, I would, and they'd say, well, no, or the yes. And I'd say, well, I, what I want to happen is this or that. They'd say, oh, I could do that with a look. I don't need to say all this stuff. And I would begin to eliminate stuff. And I used to call it writing with an eraser. That's what the best writing we did was with an eraser. 
You couldn't write anything originally that way. You couldn't start that way because nobody would understand what was going on. But once they understood the material, once they understood what the relationships were between the two characters and what I wanted to see, they said, we'll act that for you. We don't need to say that. And I could then start taking wholesale material out. And that's what we did. Also, when we do the scenes with him, <laughs> we didn't ever tell you this, <laughs> the parts that we didn't like, we ran roughshod over <laughs> We just made it sound like crap, right? <laughs> oh, I see the yeah. problem. Uh, they were, well, they're good actors. You know, what can I tell you?